All right, hello everybody. Welcome to this week's video, or one of this week's video. We're gonna to talk today about forgiving yourself. What does it mean to forgive yourself? And I'm talking about really, really, really deep forgiveness of yourself, lasting deep forgiveness of yourself. And so I just got back from a week long conference in, um, or a teaching uh, by Eckhart Tolle, the guy that wrote The Power of Now. I have it in the back seat. Um, and so it was a, it was a class, a week long class, but it's going to last for three months on, on becoming a teacher of presence. And so I always want the best information for you guys, for all of us, for myself and for my clients. I'm a psychologist in my day job. My name is Dr. Cheryl Meyer. I say on here often, I say, I help people navigate through their spiritual awakening and all of life is a spiritual awakening. You're awakening to higher consciousness, higher knowing, higher truth. This, this, um, you know, and, and I welcome all religions. I always say that, um, because I mean it, I welcome wh whoever is finding this because I have this understanding that divine love, uh, is what I call God, you know, divine love created all of us. We all came out of that. And so we're all meant to have, just like the rain, it's been raining. Like I'll show you a little rain on my, on my car. Um, it's been raining, that's why I'm inside instead of out by the tree today. Um, just like the rain falls on all of us, we're all meant to have access, I think, to this highest truth. And so I always want to give that to you in every one of my videos and every one of my teachings. So I was getting a few visions about this, you know, because take a deep breath. When I take a deep breath, even when I'm not taking a deep breath, take one for me, right? You want to come back to presence, right? Always, you're going to find your answers. Understand what Einstein said. He says, you can't solve a problem with the same energy that created the problem, okay? And so I keep seeing a mountain and I keep seeing like when you go to the top of this mountain, you're going to get a higher perspective. When you go into this world of duality, which we live in, you know, you're going to ping pong back and forth, blaming someone, blaming yourself, forgiving yourself, being begrudging toward yourself. If you come up here, you know, there's a verse that says, come up higher, you know, when you come up here or like Jesus, um, it says a lot of times, okay, so he's always teaching higher consciousness, all right? So I understand, I know Christ the most, um, not the most of everybody, but the most of other religions, because this is where if, if you, I, I choose to study deeply into this, and when you surrender yourself deeply to a truth, you'll get to the more depth of it, um, and, and and mostly to divine love. But when Christ is teaching, he's always teaching you higher consciousness, right? And so it says he went up to a mountain to, pre to, to pray, or he went up to the mountain and sat down, you know, and, and taught, like when he taught the Beatitudes, it was up on a mountain where he prayed before, before the crucifixion on the Mount of Olives, where he was transfigured on the Mount Tabor, I think. I'm not sure of that mountain, but I was explaining this to my mom. My mom's in town, right? And so, um, and, and this is, will go about forgiveness because she was saying, you know, why don't you, why don't you look for a problem, look for a solution right here on the, on the, this mountain of duality where there's good and bad and up and down and bad and, you know, a, a victim and a perpetrator and blah 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 you keep staying stuck in here it's like and I thought of Einstein like you know if you if you keep looking on the third floor to solve a problem you're going to keep getting third floor solutions when you go up to higher wisdom go up above go back to the creator even even I'm getting the Narnia book even in the first Narnia book by C.S. Lewis right um he says if the witch who had killed Aslan, you know, but then Aslan rose again, right? If she had gone back to the beginning, to the dawn of time, then she would know, she'd have a knowing. Because Plato says all remembering is just, I mean, all knowing is just remembering. She would have a knowing. So we all have access to divine love, to this highest wisdom. This is not something that I have a monopoly of. You have this. So he said, then she would know the, the wicked witch, right? The white witch, 
of um, uh, in Narnia that made it always winter and never Christmas, right? Always like this frozen heart, you know, instead of the warmth and the love that comes at Christmas, you know? Christ Mass, the birth of, of Christ, the divine love into this world that brings forgiveness, that brings love, you know? Anyway, if she had looked to the dawn of time, then she would remember that a, a, a person who had committed no crime could not be kept down, could not be killed. Like, yes, killed, but could not, death couldn't overpower that being, right? And so death itself would reverse itself and life would come. And it's a mystery, it's a mystery, right? So all of these things are coming up. I'm trusting they're coming up for a reason for us. Now, let's see why we don't forgive ourselves because I'm quite the perfectionist myself in my personality self. But look, you are deeper. Who are you in your essence? This will help you know how to forgive yourself. Who are you? Who are you in your mother's womb? You know, before you had a name, before you had all these identities put on yourself before you had these habits before you had all your fears you know where um i know me my, myself and i can speak for myself for all of us i'm like just an example for all of us not because i care about talking about myself it's because um that it's like i don't want to hurt people in the way that i have been hurt and so I'm so conscientious and so put all this pressure on myself. You better not do that and that and that and that and that. And it's just like, you can't live your life that way. You can't live your life of, um, in fear that you're going to do this thing or that thing or this thing or be like that bad guy or hurt someone as bad as I was hurt, you know. And when you, when you, here's the violin, right, you know, and I'm not making light of the experiences that I've had. I could cry for a long time if I thought about them, but, um, or just was present with them, but that's not who I am. I'm not, I'm not a victim. I was victimized, let's say I had those experiences that were not loving or not protective or using or taking what was not someone else's to take, you know, in lots of different situations. But who are you in your isness? In, like, you know, if you see this little baby, right? And, and you hold the little tiny baby, it's like a little puppy, you know, or a little kitten, you know? Our puppy was like this big when we first got her. She's so cute. I would show her, show you a picture if I had one here, but so cute and so innocent, you know? And it's just like, wouldn't you say to that baby, like, whatever you do when you're 10, like, whatever you've done, like, there's the divine love that always wants to forgive you, always wants to reconcile you. Now, um, so it's like, we would say that to any other baby. And so time is just an illusion, right? And so why wouldn't we say that to this baby of ourselves? It's like, I, I love what Eckhart Tolle says. Now, this helps a lot is like, whatever you have done that was wrong not you know not of love the word sin don't turn this off because i'm using the word sin right and it's in greek i took greek it means hamartia it means to miss the mark it just means i draw see i wear this heart like drop down on your head into your heart right it's like to miss the mark of perfect love if christ always lived right here i have this cross too today if Christ always lived in the middle, in the middle of the middle of perfect love, highest consciousness, if you watch all of his words, if you get a Bible with the red letter edition and read his words, you can see he's always acting in highest consciousness. Even if he's saying to someone, you're being foolish, you're foolish because he's showing them, he's correcting them, he's not doing it out of egotism. So to sin is to miss the mark. So let's just say some of my actions are over here and some are way down here and some are over here and, and your actions as well, right? You know, um, we took took things from other people that we thought were ours to take that were not ours to take, you know, you know, called them a name that's, you know, it's like if if you understand the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaching our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's like namaste. Ho namaste is my soul self bows and recognizes and sees your soul self hallowed be your name is like no your name is in everything everything created look there's a tree up there right that we can look at it's 
through the sunroof. It's like everything that's created, that's every soul being and every everything, everything that's created, even the silver is created out of something from the earth, you know, and and people's hands that have souls um, forged this and, and decorated it and whatever, you know. And so if you think to sin is to miss the mark of perfect love, so stop beating yourself up. It's just understanding. Here's where Eckhart comes in. He was, him and his partner Kim were teaching, you know, that you acted on the level of consciousness that you were at at that time that's you were acted on the highest level or lowest level whatever you were aware of in that moment based on you know it's like um if I always felt belittled by my father oftentimes you know and wasn't good enough and then and he would teach us um some things that weren't true you know and so I was reading an article the other day in this group, like this Christian group, you know, and I was like, this is a lie. This is, and I felt so attacked by this guy. I, he was really teaching about like, like things I do not agree with. And I, I was wanting to be protective of the other people. I'm like, this is such a reduction of this. this you're missing out. You know what I mean? And so it's like, I noticed myself get all defensive because it's like, I felt so much like this in childhood, you know, um, if I have my other boots on, I'd show you my boots. It's like that, you know. And so, um, you guys, you guys, you know, you know me here. You would understand. You'd understand. It doesn't. It doesn't mean I have an excuse to start yelling at a bunch of people that, you know, that didn't read the article thoroughly or whatever. Whoever, whoever assigned it for our reading, and, um, you know. But in relationship it brings up your issues relationships can be it it amplifies your issues so it's a, it's an opportunity like my mom visiting me in town right now because she took care of my kids when i was at the class you know it's like um my mom visiting can amplify all of these things that are un, in me you know I, I can help her regress and not help her but you know goes back to things from our childhood pains from the past and, and we can look at it as a source of a place to learn because we love each other, because we're committed as best as we can to stay in this place of love. Then there's room, even on this mountain, you know, that goes down from here to like try to go back up here to this higher place, right? And so forgiveness is like, it's this divine thing. It doesn't come from yourself, okay? And so we think, oh, I have to forgive that person. And it's just like this heavy weight, you know, and forgive does not mean excuse. Um, so that's where I differ a little bit from Eckhart is like, yes, that person only operate, like the person that ghosted me, let's say, if we use that example <laughs> or whatever, it's just like that just walked out and didn't give me any explanation after there was this, there was this, what I thought like one of the deepest connections I'd ever had with a person you know, and that's why it just didn't, it didn't make sense to me. It's like that person didn't, was operating on the highest level of his consciousness or whatever level of, uh, of his consciousness at that moment. Now I can understand that intellectually, right? And I can understand that about myself, but, but also, okay, so there's this perfect divine love. There's perfect God on the top of this that always wants to make a way to reconcile us. Now, in the Christian faith, we believe that Christ was the one, you know, that died on the cross because Adam brought some kind of falling away from God in. Christ is trying to, you know, he did. He reconciled us back to a perfect God because I, I like how C.S. Lewis describes it. He says, you know, you can have all these excuses and there are a lot of reasons and excuses for the things that we do. He's like, but there's that bit left over that you can't find an excuse for. And we can look at it a lot easier in other people, you know, and I'm so hard on myself. I know I can be hard on other people that cause me pain or cause other people pain, you know, or bring that up in them or whatever. He's like, there's that bit left over. That's the part that forgiveness is. But good luck, like good, good, good news. Good news. Here's the good news. The gospel means good news. It's like, even if you're not at a place where like Christ makes sense to you, you know, I, I don't try to force any religion on, on people, you know, I understand that. But even that entering that is a mystery for me to keep unfolding. Like God keeps revealing more and more of what that is to me. 
but understand it as divine love, okay? As divine love is um, comes from up here. If we are all in this world of form, we are created from this formless, the I am, this love, this divine love, then it's like participating in the divine love and saying, here, is, here are the debts. Here are the ways I've noticed that this person trespassed. They walked on me instead of having perfect love. They were out, outside of this perfect love. You know, and so that's forgiving other people. You give that debt up to God instead of resending it back to these people and resentment, resentment, resentment. That's resent. I keep resending them the bill instead of, and when you're doing that, you're waiting for scraps. You're waiting for these people in here. We can only give each other scraps when we're operating in our human, you know, and human self but when we go up to this divine love you can take from the divine love and ask for this grace to flow into you god i give you all these people's debts all my own debts all of the ways that i i didn't measure up i didn't measure up to highest consciousness what i know now of how to love you know and so it's like when you do that, you you it's this huge power that's given to you, this grace where you don't have to stay down here and be a victim perpetrator, you know, and just keep ping pong. Ping, ping. I used to say that to my kids. I'm like, you're just pinging and ponging. You're escalating because you're just going back and forth trying to hurt the other person to get back at the hurt that they did. Forgive them. It says when we forgive others, then we will be forgiven because it's like when we're holding our hands like this, the flow of love from up here can't come through us to ourselves or to them. When we go, look, I'm going to give that debt to God, then whatever they owed you, you're not waiting for that person down here anymore. You're going up to the top of the mountain and you're going back. This is why I say Jesus says, die every day to yourself. X and the O, like hugs and kisses, you know, this is where you get the love. Come back to the oneness from which we all came, you know and and apply that if you if you come from a different faith practice you can understand you're learning how to detach from just the mind's ideas and my insistence of my idea that i came up of how you could pay me back you know what i mean that was one of the things they came up in the class and then i'll wrap this up is when i was in this presence through movement class with kim ing you know Eckhart's partner, like his wife, you know, common law wife would be because they've been together a long time and they're committed to each other. But anyway, and from what they said, you know, but we don't have to judge. That's the mind going, no, no, no. Is someone doing something wrong? Blah, blah, blah. You know, just let them be. They, oh, wisdom and truth can come from, from so many places. And, and I'm so appreciative. And so Kim was having us do this exercise where you take deep breaths and then you shake, shake, shake to the song, you know. It was such a beautiful song. And, then, and this other song I just sang to you, she started, you will, you will not believe it. Go back to my old video, okay? So this, you'll see that was before the class and this is afterwards because I started mentioning that my friend, my son from the movie, I didn't say what movie, had started, it played the soundtrack and this was in one of the soundtracks. So it was like, going on up to the spirit in the sky. That's where I'm gonna go when I die. I get so, it's like, there's so much love when you practice going into this oneness, that's why I get overwhelmed with love because I practice every day going here as, as hard as I am on myself, as much as I never want to hurt other people or lead people off on the wrong path. It's so tender as you practice going up here. Anyway, and so she played that song and I was like, I can't believe it. Of course, there's a synchronicity that I, this is like a 70s song or something that my son had just played it and I had just sing it for you guys in a, in a video, right? Anyway, she had us shake everything off, like let go of all your past during that song. And, and then she had us do these different poses and you're holding a pose. And there's this one, and I ought to know because there's this one that's like called the runner's pose. And I've done this video so many times, this other video that has that pose in it. And he's like, this is where a lot of trauma can be held in your hips, you know? And so when you do that pose, it can release trauma because your body keeps score, if you know that book. Your body um, internalizes trauma sometime. And so I was just doing this pose and it was like 40 minutes into practicing deep presence. Come back to your isness, yourself beyond your name, beyond your skin color, you know. I love, I was just listening to Eckhart Tolle and he was saying, you can't make yourself transform and feel the grace. He's like, you got to just 
be in presence and then the grace will come to you and you trust what transformation is going to happen. Well, in this, all of a sudden I started bawling, you know, and she was just like, if feelings come up, notice them, let them arise, you know, and she just said child pose before that. So I don't know if that triggered something, but it was just like this wanting this, I would notice, right? This longing just to be held, you know, and I just wanted to be held. And I just felt like I'd never been held ever as a baby, you know, like I was left <laughs> in my crib for years, you know, and my mom, you know, I was just talking to her about it and she's like, I held you, you know, but whatever, you know, it's like, but we, we got to the bottom of it. She's, she was saying, you know, that her saying in life is life is crappy. So be happy. <laughs> like, like you're never going to get the love that you want. And so, um, what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you. I'm like, I just wanted someone to tell me everything's going to be okay and hold me back in the oneness, back where we came from. Because like Plato says, all learning is just remembering. We remember this deep love, right? And so, and, but I noticed when I was noticing that longing to just be held, you know, and I talked to you about the surfers before I live in California, you know, I could go find some hot surfer to hold me, believe me. And they got strong arms, you know, but I'm not doing that. I'm not choosing to do that as much as some days it seems like that would solve the problem, you know, and I understand why people go from one relationship to another and they keep looking for that because it does temporarily take you away from that painful feeling because when that feeling came up in me, you feel all this shame. Like, was I not worth being held, you know? And you think that shame is you, but you're beyond the shame. You can go beyond the shame. You are not, you're just, your consciousness in a form, in a body, your soul in a body. That's what George MacDonald teach says. Don't teach your kids they, they are a body. Teach them they are, they, they are the body. You have, you, you have, you have a soul. Don't teach them they have a soul. Teach them they are the soul. Whoops, I'm just blocking them. They are the soul and they have a body. You're in a body. The body is part of it. It's given to you. It's a gift. But anyway, once I saw, I was like, someone like, because I was married for a long time. I'm like, you know, some, my spouse could hold me for 10 years straight. And that feeling might not go away until I deal with the pain that was underneath that, you know? And once I let that pain surface and it's like, no, you're, you're not ever, it's not your fault that that didn't happen. It happened. And you internalize it as if there was something wrong with me, as if there's something wrong with you, but it's not. So it's just when you get back in this presence and sit with it for a little bit longer, you know, you, she, she came through that exercise, gave us the space for this pain to surface. And then thank God, she said, don't, you know, you don't have to identify with the pain. The pain is not you. Observe the pain. Not like I am so detached, but it's like, it's just flowing through you. It's this old shame that was stored in my body, right? And I felt so much lighter and I feel so much lighter just from letting myself cry that five minutes maybe it took of crying, you know? And so some people say you have to feel it to heal it. Now that doesn't mean keep saying, oh, I'm a victim. So I'm going to keep crying because some guy doesn't know my worth and, and, and doesn't choose to stay in my life, you know, that I felt a strong connection with. It doesn't, it doesn't mean stay a victim of that. It's just like cry the tears that come up from that. Cry the shame that comes up from that, you know, cry the feeling of being bullied again by your father and then showing up in another guy, you know, feeling bullied because there's no explanation. There's just a walkout, you know, eventually there was a few months later, there was actually, I became unghosted, but it was just like a sentence, you know, it's okay, whatever. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. It's not a mature way, but have I handled everything maturely in my life? No, you know, and so there are excuses, but there's that bit left over. Okay. For yourself and for other people. And it's like, you know, how do, how do you take that, take that up to God and say, God, I'm asking you, your living water, your living presence, your mercy, you know, Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Whatever it is, is understanding the divine love going, God, however you can fill this up. So I stop waiting for scraps from people that don't know how to love me consciously. God, do you think God, God knows how to love you consciously. He led us in this world of duality for whatever reason. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. 
You don't have to fear being stuck in this. Go back to the love and you can know it and you can have it. All right, my mom's waiting to have lunch with me. I wish you so much love. I'm so glad you're here. Welcome all the new subscribers. Please subscribe. If you're watching this, I invite you to subscribe because YouTube, you can't count on YouTube to push out my video so that you'll see it again. This is your one chance. Consider it a miracle that this video came to you today, really, for sure because they usually push them out to about 100 people. So you're one out of a hundred and one out of a million and one out of a billion, you know, for that. So I encourage you to like and subscribe and, and write comments of your, I don't know, favorite 80 songs or anything you want to put down in the comments. It just pushes the videos out. I appreciate it um, because that makes this video go to more people. So we're doing what we can from the grassroots up. All right, much love. Lots of love. Forgive yourself. Choose. Consciously choose to forgive yourself because you were always worth it. Just like that baby was worth it, that baby is you. That baby is you. So learn how to find forgiveness. Ask God how to enter into that mystery of how to forgive, how to take that divine energy and give it out to other people so you stop waiting and you stop waiting for yourself to figure it out all out and go, God, give me your grace so that I can know this forgiveness and live it. All right, much love.